Hello, everyone. I'd like to officially welcome you to Getting People's Attention with the Power of Your Ideas, Using the Brain for Presentation and Meeting Management. My name is Shelley Hayduck, and I'm co-hosting today's event with Matt Caton, our Director of Customer Solutions. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Today's session is all about, um, you know, in some ways, what, what should be kind of a really obvious application of the brain, but uh, a lot of people aren't aware of the power of using your brain rather than just sort of aggregating all your information as a simply a presentation tool, um, which can be used before your meeting, during your meeting, after your meeting. So we're going to cover all that. So um, you can use your brain for uh, presentations before during or after a meeting. So uh, first of all, we have this uh, great option under window called presentation mode. You can also control shift P to get there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And uh, if I wanna go ahead and do anything in this mode, I can show my notes or I can hide my notes just by using that, uh, the little arrows in the upper right-hand corner. So what I like to do, um, before I start my presentations, if I have my brain up in a meeting room, I'll actually set my brain to wander mode. And I'm not sure if uh, people, uh, if any of you have used wander. Actually, I was just tweeting with somebody the other day who says he loves to use wander mode for uh, idea inspiration. So there's many uh, uses for the interesting wander mode, which is, in a sense, you put, click it once you have a fairly developed brain, and the brain sort of wanders through all your thoughts. Um, so that's kind of one thing. So what we're going to do is chat a little bit about um, how to use the brain for presentations, give you sort of our insider tips and tricks to help you become a better presenter and why to use the brain. Um, so first of all, let's cover the why. So clicking on any thought in your brain will trigger all related pieces of information. So one of the things we found is um, obviously PowerPoint is a great tool for presentation, but a lot of people have been PowerPointed to death. And if you don't have the bandwidth to create fantastic animations or graphics in your PowerPoint, things can look pretty mundane. So one of the nice things about the brain is that uh, you can actually get busy executives' attention, get your audience's attention in a novel way while you are actually minimizing your graphic and art requirements. Because um, in terms of getting some animation going, uh, all you have to do is create your brain, add some icons that are built into the software, maybe a, a novel wallpaper, and we'll show you how to set wallpaper. It's real simple. And, and there you have a really nice brain that um, you know, can really visualize your ideas and focus on core ideas and their ramica ramifications. So as you're presenting your brain, you have the option to click on a thought, or you can actually just mouse over certain thoughts. Um, I'm talking about getting uh, busy executives' attention, so I could have made that my central thought, or I can mouse over that. And then in terms of applications, um, a lot of people like to use the brain in presentation mode for collective brainstorming. So I might have a, a little bit of an agenda built out on my brain. I can throw my brain up on a projector screen or do a go-to meeting with someone and start a collective brainstorming session um, where we want to go ahead and start visualizing team ideas. Um, there's no limit to the number of thoughts that can be added. There's easy linking of contacts. You can add additional files. So um, that's something that you can do. That's just one application. Um, educational seminars and lectures. We actually have a lot of professors and teachers um, and instructors who create a brain of their content, of their curriculum. And I'm going to cover a few. We also have a really cool example on our customers page of the Joint Council of Cardiothoracic Surgery. And they actually use the brain not only to present to their students, but actually as a knowledge base. And that's sort of the, an interesting um, next phase. If you use your brain for presentation, you can also publish it on the web. And it can become either just a browsable, read-only knowledge base for your audience, or you can actually go ahead and enable collaboration. So it doesn't just, it's not just a deck that gets emailed after, you have the ability to go ahead and continue to evolve it. Um, project management and meetings. Um, you can link people and areas of responsibility. You can perform, look at impact assessment by organizing all your um, phases of a project in a brain. 
and of course, uh, just capture your core requirements and use the brain for meeting management. So we'll cover that as well. Um, sales pitches, pitches and business development. Matt, I think, is going to show a nice, a nice example of how to use the brain to really showcase a product and use it as almost a visual catalog as you're um, you know, selling your products. Also, visual arguments and persu persuasive proofs. Um, we have researchers that will visualize their scientific methodology, lawyers that will do sort of if-then scenarios. So all these applications um, that you may have not thought of uh, might just be using your brain for file management or you know, to, to research are very interesting and we've had some great successes with them in the brain. So in terms of the, the three phases for better presentations, we're gonna start, I'm gonna start by talking about before the presentation, what you can do before. So a couple things, obviously you can craft an agenda and go ahead and organize that. And then you'll notice that I've got some static thoughts at the top of my screen. And oh, look at this, adjust the animation screen. That was something I was supposed to do, um, which I, I did, but I didn't think, I guess I should have slowed it down even further. Um, these are static links, and these can also be sort of like your visual cue cards. So as I'm presenting, I can click around my brain, but I sort of know that I need to talk about this, I need to talk after the presentation, I need to cover the why, and I can continue to just click on these pins, and it's very easy to go ahead and create a pin. So if I'm going to give a, a presentation on the brain and I want to remember to talk about team brain, I can just go ahead and create a pin up here. And maybe, you know, this is not that important. After all, it's just wander mode. I can go ahead and remove that pin. So these pins that become sort of your static links that your audience can see as you're presenting. And then one of the things that you also want to remember is as you're presenting, you also have your search. So you can just start typing in the first couple letters. So I just start typing in before. And of course, this brain's smaller and I can just go to that area, but I can just simply type my search in and move to that area. So if you ever, if you're using a larger brain or you're lost, or you need to move to another area that isn't immediately connected or that, you, that isn't pinned, don't forget about your search. It's right at the bottom of the screen in presentation mode. And you know, it will allow you to move very quickly, or here we go, I just start, started typing in the word graphics. Someone wants to know about graphics in the brain, and boom, I'm there. And I'm gonna go back to my little thought on before presentation. So I'm using the search very quickly to get to that nested uh, conceptual framework of the idea that I'm presenting. And um, I sometimes people say, well, there's a lot of animation, there might be too much clicking. Keep in mind, you don't have to go ahead and click to every thought in your brain. So I'm on before presentation. I don't have to, as I'm talking about organizing ideas, yes, I can click through each one of these, but I don't have to. A simple mouse over, over the children thoughts of your topic can be very, uh, very effective. So some other things that we're gonna cover, adding zoomable icons where you can actually um, have an image attached to the thought, and Matt actually has some, some very nice examples of that, so we'll show you how to do that. And then adding thought types and tags can also help. Now, during your presentation, these are all things before, um, as I mentioned as we started, I like to use the brain in wander mode before the meeting starts. Presentation mode under your window options is also great. And then we also have some additional views um, that you might want to use beyond the standard view. So if I right click on my background, I can go to view. I'm in normal view, but a lot of people like to use outline view for presentation mode where I'm simply, I can actually do a complete overview of everything we're gonna cover. So here I'm gonna give my, uh, my, my audience um, an overview. So if I wanna open up the applications, you all can see that and the whys. And this really gives people a sense of kind of where we're going. So if you just want to go, I don't know if you, some people just, if you want a more static look, you can just keep this on the screen as well as sort of an outline. This is more, um, I guess it's not necessarily as exciting, but it, you know, it certainly does its job. And the nice thing about this is you still have the ability to make connections. So if I want to link collective brainstorming back to the audience doesn't get lost in the slide, I can go ahead and make that connection. I can also close different branches, like when we're done talking about applications, 
I can close this. We've talked about why, you know, and I, I can actually just open before, during, or we're going to start covering after the presentation. So I can open that up and move around. So this is another sort of uh, another way to go through your brain um, beyond our standard view. And of course, I'm using the um, my my mouse button to scroll to make the font size bigger or smaller. So that's also something. And I'm just uh, now pressing on the background to kind of move this around. So this is outline view. Um, the, I'm going to go back to normal just to kind of get you back to the beginning. The other thing that you can use is the uh, new expanded view. You can create an expanded view and save it, or I can actually use expanded view to kind of place my thoughts in relevant areas. So I'm just going to go ahead and do a little bit of a customized expanded view here where I'm dropping thoughts by holding down the mouse button and then I just plus to open up an area and I can continue to do this and maybe I'll put the Y over here and then applications down here. So this is expanded view where I can really just sort of collapse all different branches and I can also save expanded view if I want to go ahead and do that um, that I might actually escape out of in this view and then go up to um, options to go ahead and save the expanded view so there's a lot that can be done in that view and I'm just going to go ahead now and go back to normal view and go back to my presentation mode and so here we are. So, and then finally, uh, we're gonna talk a little bit, I think we've covered most of this. We've actually covered the instant activate and um, creating new thoughts from discussion during presentation. Creating a new thought here to have my brain in outline mode. You know, you can just come in here. If somebody has a nice idea, go ahead and create collective brainstorming. Um, you know, maybe you are developing a new product. So I'm just gonna start typing under my agenda of collective brainstorming. And here you would actually start adding thoughts based on your meeting. So somebody might have an idea for um, new source materials. So we'll add that in. Maybe there is a, an, an idea about a new vendor relationship. So we're going to add that in, or there might be some, some discussion on cost cutting. Okay, so I'm just coming here, and we're just adding things as we go along. And, you know, the, these things can continue to grow, and uh, then this brain can be shared. And so that is um, during the presentation. And then, of course, after the presentation, this whole area becomes the knowledge base that we talked about. So we're going to cover um, how to store additional brain in your brain, how to publish it on the web, how to make it into a team brain. There's many ways you can send the brain out to people, too. And if you don't want to use anything on the web, you also can send it as a, a brain zip as well. Um, so lots of possibilities there. So what I'm going to do is actually escape out of this brain, which, by the way, is a reference on our site. So if anyone wants a brain on how to use a brain for presentation, we're absolutely more than happy to share this. And we also have this published online as well. In fact, let me just go ahead and view this brain in the back browser, just so you can see um, what this looks like. And in fact, I can share this link. I'm not going to open my Twitter account. I'll hit share so you guys can see this URL, feel free to go to webbrain.com forward slash u, and that is 10CQ. Uh, I can um, put that in the, the Q&A after, uh, and I can tweak that out. Now, this is this is the brain that I did present. Um, and so you can, this is all available online for anyone who wants to, to look at this here. So you can see it's, it's quite sim similar. We are half, it is functioning in the browser here. And these are all the thoughts. Um, so I've got all kinds of things here. Haven't synchronized my latest changes, but of course I can do that. Uh, this brain here in terms of uh, sync, that's something that I can decide what I want to do as far as setting my, uh, my brain settings. Uh, you know, I can, I can go in here and adjust them as well. So this particular brain, I have it public. 
So it is available to everyone. Um, now, your default will always be private. And I have Brigitte and Tracy and Patrick all as readers who have access. And then I have Matt Caton as an editor who can come in and edit. So I can actually adjust. So Matt can come in and add thoughts. Um, we can collaborate on this brain. And you know, I can save this or cancel it. And this is just in my settings uh, online on the web. And I can get to that from this. If I want to send this as a brain zip to someone or look at my stats on this brain, you know, I can go ahead and do this. So um, that's another way to do it. So the, your presentation doesn't have to be over. Um, you can uh, publish this online, either publicly or privately. A lot of our edu educators actually just uh, because they're dealing with stuff that isn't confidential, they just make it pro uh, public. And actually, if you don't want it featured or anything, there is an unlisted setting, just like YouTube. If you want to share a certain link, um, for instance, the zoomable icons, adding zoomable icons, um, you know, you can just go ahead and share a certain thought as well. I can embed this into a website. Oh, and there's Mona Lisa. I'm just going to show you how the icons zoom out as well. So that's on the web. Um, so speaking of education, I'm going to go to a couple other examples. You guys can get a, a little bit more, uh, some, in, some more ideas on how you can use the brain. I mentioned thought types and tags. So I want to show you a couple example brains where um, we have some thought types that we're using to organize. And so this is the teaching and learning brain. I'm going to, I have to bring this one up because we do have so many different present, uh, educators using the brain in this capacity. Um, this is the top of the brain. And you'll also notice here, you know, in this case, I've, I've done presentation mode, and I can always go do presentation mode, but you don't have to. Obviously, you can present your brain just um, as the, the dialogue here. So, for instance, I'm going to go ahead and go into, and again, um, I've got my pin to the United States president, so I could get to that through my topic social studies, um, and political science, and then United States government. But I also could have just got to there from the pen. And the reason I want to show you this thought is because this is a nice example of zoomable icons where we've gone ahead and attached each president. Uh, we actually need to go ahead and update this brain a little more and add our current president right now. Um, but uh, you know, that's something that obviously can be very easily done. And, but here what you can see is in addition to the thoughts being created in a numerical fashion, they also have thought types as well. So um, you can see that George Washington isn't typed, but John Adams is typed as a Federalist in yellow. Thomas Jefferson is typed as a Democrat. And then we have Abe Lincoln over here typed as a Republican. So this enables me to add another level of categorization beyond the parent-child jump situation um, to go ahead and, and organize information. And the other thing that I can do is if I want to change this layout and arrange by type, now what you can see, and this is just in the alphabetical order of the type, I've got all the Democrats organized, all the Federalists, and all the Republicans. So I can change the ordering if I have a, a group of thoughts that is typed. And also you can create a chronological view of uh, thoughts by uh, numbering them. So if I hit order by name, that's going to give that chronological view. So that's um, one example. And the other thing that you can do, and then of course, is go ahead and tell a story about your brain. So uh, if I want to go ahead and activate, let's just go into the, uh, the New Deal, which is under Franklin Delano Roosevelt. I can do that, and I can see that's under the Great Depression, which is under World War II. So in this case, I'm actually going to use the brain parent-child relationship to visualize a time timeline to sort of, I want to navigate people for effect through kind of a chronology of World War II. So obviously, for those of you that are new to the brain, any thought in the center of your screen is your active thought. Now, the novel thing about the brain is I can have, these are, these are my parent thoughts. So World War II is under wars and also the Great Depression. I can have one piece of information organized under multiple categories, which is really nice to, to give people the context of, of how information fits together and, and where things belong. So I'm going to click on um, kind of the initiation, which was the 1939 invasion of Poland, which sort of divided the world into the Allies, and you can see the 
countries there, and the Axis powers. And then, of course, the United States entered the war, unfortunately, with the attack of the Pearl Harbor. So I've got this. So now I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And there were all kinds of things that happened. Um, and, we, and then eventually we had D-Day with the invasion of Normandy. So you can see in this case, I'm just clicking downward. Um, and where does that leave us? With the Allied victory, um, we've got, we can talk about casualties impact, the next thing with the Cold War, um, post-war or the United Nations being formed. But this is all, um, you know, this is a way of going through a brain a little bit differently from what I did in the other example, where I'm actually drilling up and down a chronology. So something for you to think about. And then, of course, you can have interesting areas like what if and, and start brainstorming here. Um, you'll also notice if I'm not in presentation mode, I have my past thought list. Now, that can be somewhat useful if you're really clicking around. So if I want to move back to, you know, who the allies were in World War II, I can go ahead and do that. Um, the other example in this brain that I want to show you is um, in biology and life sciences. And, you know, a lot of times we just have a static chart. And you can see, again, I'm using the brain's zoomable icons here um, to show the animal kingdom taxonomy from kingdom all the way to specific species. But what, what the brain offers is an animated way to go ahead and, and add this information, but also to go ahead and grow something that would otherwise be a chart as a knowledge base. I'm going to go ahead and click on the animal kingdom. And from there, I can go ahead and go into the phylum, which is core data. And you'll notice I'm using the past thought, life, thought types to go ahead and organize some information. Speaking of animal kingdom, my cat just jumped on our, my desk, and so that's fine. So we'll actually go into the mammals area, and let's go into cat. So here we are in the cat section of the animal kingdom, and you'll see this is the family, um, and I've got some, some zoomable icons. And from here, I can go ahead and add information, and it's very easy to go ahead and um, add more information. So if I want to go ahead and go out to the brain, and let's just go ahead and do a search, a web search on the Puma. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the search web feature. And now rather than just presenting, we are actually online um, looking for information. So the other thing that's great, let's talk a little bit about zoomable icons. Maybe I want to use a different image here. Um, you know, magnificent creatures. Indeed, what I can do is simply copy this image. I'm just going to go ahead and copy this image and I can just come right to this thought and I, I have an image here but I'm actually just going to go ahead and paste the thought icon so I'm actually going to replace this and you'll see that I'll get a lovely zoomable icon uh, appearing there and the other thing that I can do but if, if I just want part of an image is I can actually use the brain snag it feature so let's go ahead and add a few more thoughts here and thoughts that I'm going to add, and here, I don't, there we go. Sorry, there's a little bit of a lag with the web meeting, but I just, what I did is actually, I have this image attached, and um, again, Matt's going to cover this, because he has a lot of really cool graphics, but it actually expands to the size of the original image that you've added, so, um, and this is kind of nice, because as I'm presenting, right, I can talk about different uh, cat species, but then I can actually zoom over and I get this wonderful shot of uh, the puma or mountain lion, lion uh, in available. And then I can continue and maybe show people, you know, the cheetah or, or the lynx and, you know, how that. And the other thing that's nice is you can start making connections. Um, the, the cheetah's habitat, let's go ahead and add a thought for, or sorry, the puma. So let's go ahead and say puma habitat and I can start building a document here if I want to go ahead and add an attachment maybe a document go ahead and add a document and get started and the other thing about this is I can go ahead and link it to certain concepts so I have a section in my brain on deforestation and environmental impact of deforestation which affects the habitat so actually I'll go ahead and link this here, so um, I can go ahead and change this and move things around. So now, when I'm looking at um, in, in the science section of 
deforestation, you can see I can focus on a couple different animals here. So it's very easy to go ahead and add um, and make connections. The other thing that I want to do is let me just go back to the web. I'm going to just grab a, a link. I'm going to go ahead and link from the Wikipedia. I'm simply going to go ahead and uh, let's go here and drag and drop from my browser address window and drop this. I'm going to create a separate thought here in the brain. So now I've actually got the Wikipedia entry on this. And from here, I can continue to uh, go ahead. If there's a specific link I want, maybe on natural, uh, oh, natural history. Here's something on distribution and habitat. Sometimes what's nice is to copy information. And let's just go ahead and paste it. And I'm going to go ahead and move the brain. I have to move my go to meeting so I can get the grab the, the brains, notes, put the notes out so everyone can see the notes. And sometimes you actually want to show your notes because you can have images and actually, wow, the, uh, the notes section and the brain on is, is even better than what we have here. But let's just, you know, we're going to go with the standard build here. So now I've got in this section on Puma Habitat, I've got the, I've got my document, but I've got a little note here on, you know, what that consists of here and, and how it's being used. So again, you can see how this becomes a nice uh, knowledge base to be built. So now what I'm going to do uh, really quickly is I'm going to start a new brain. Just so you can see how easy it is if you, are, if you have a meeting or uh, maybe a, some kind of event just to create a new brain from scratch for your presentation. So I'm going to call this my 2017 uh, sales retreat. And this is my new brain. I'm going to get started. And uh, this is actually going to be a brain where we have different people coming to the event. So I have a couple things I want to have in this brain. I'm going to actually use my brain to map out my agenda. So first of all, we have number one, a product release strategy. And then what I'm going to use is use the semicolon to indicate that I'm typing in multiple thoughts at once. Now, number two is our uh, sales pathway to success. This is a whole other um, little area in the brain. And I hit enter and you can see I've got two thoughts in my brain. Very easy to do. In this case, I want to add a third component to my meeting. After we talk about this, we can do customer service. Now, notice, I mean, the last brain, of course, isn't numerated in this case because I have a set agenda that I want to cover. I'm actually numerating each thought. And then number four I'm going to add here is uh, future growth, okay? So I've got these thoughts in my brain. And now what I can do is I can go ahead and just start adding kind of the key, my core ideas that we're going to be talking about. So we want to talk about additional resources. for product development, say for product. And then uh, the other thing that I want to do in this section is we did a focus group. So let's talk about our focus groups. And then finally, the timing of our launch. Let's say launch timing. So here we are. So you can see I've, I've got things started. Now, the other thing that's nice as you're building this brain, keep in mind this is a brain for um, different uh, people to look at, is the brain actually contains over 1,500 built-in icons. So if I want to go ahead and select an icon from the brain's icon library, I can go ahead and do that. So um, you know we've got all kinds of things. Um, you can go in through the categories. So I'm actually going to go in or maybe objects, and for product release, um, I'm going to go ahead and use binoculars to sort of indicate that, you know, we're looking ahead. So I've got that. And then for sales, pathway to success, again, I'm going to go ahead and just go ahead and uh, grab an icon. I can get to from this menu, but I can also click on the plus sign in the thought properties area as well. So let's go ahead and go into our finance icon 
And I'm going to go ahead and grab a little dollar symbol here. So you can see how this brain, um, you know, I'm just starting to put it together. Uh, and of course, this, this, is, this is so much fun, right? I can spend all day doing this, but we're going to move on. Is I'm just going to go ahead and uh, add more icons to each particular thought. And the other thing that I want to show you is adding existing information. So I'll come out here. And, uh, we actually have a, uh, a section here on different documents that I want people to have, especially in our sales area. So in our sales area, a lot of it's just gonna be documents that we wanna cover. So I'm gonna drag and drop those documents in. So a couple things here, and I have my brain in auto hide. Let me just load it as a normal window so everyone can kind of see the brain at the same time as I'm dragging and dropping here. So um, Pathways to Executive Gathering, that was a document that I created. I can simply drag and drop that. Now what that does is this creates a shortcut to where this file um, is on my desktop. I, pro I actually wanna move this file into the brain where I can copy it because I wanna synchronize this to the cloud. So you can see it's no longer in that folder, it's in my brain. And the other thing that I can do is I can go ahead, I can copy thoughts. So if I wanna go ahead and uh, in product release area, talk a little bit about our proposed funding. I'm gonna, Go ahead and actually, sorry, I'll just go ahead and take a couple of these documents and hit copy. And in this case, I'm going to right click and paste them. So now, in addition to kind of our topics for product release that we're going to cover in the meeting, I've got my two documents here as well. And uh, you can see the way um, this is coming together very nicely. The other thing that I can do is uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, have a thought for my our newly formed sales territories. We'll just call them sales zones. And uh, I actually have a territory map. I have an image uh, in my brain. So I'm just gonna drag and drop that image and on this particular thought. And you can see that now I've got that nice zoomable icon appearing in this brain. So this is great. So as I'm talking about um, our sales pathways, I can you know, launch my document. In this case, of course, it's just a, a blank. There's the document. And the other thing I can do is I can open up the, I don't even have to open the graphic. I can just mouse over this graphic to talk about our new sales territories. And you know, it all looks it's pretty nice. The other thing that I do wanna say is of course you might wanna add some, some nice wallpaper to the brain you're presenting. So you can actually just go up to, you can copy and paste on the back, or you can actually go up to options and hit select wallpaper. And I'll just go to my desktop and I've got some key wallpapers here. Um, I don't know if any of these are, oh, the jogger wallpaper might be okay. And I'll hit open. And now you can see how interesting this looks. So this is our sales retreat talking about pathways to success. And we have a runner in the background. And of course you can go in and adjust the, the background of the thoughts and the colors. Um, but you can see how quickly I've built something that is, you know, quite a, quite a significant uh, pre and powerful way to communicate my ideas with people. Um, you know, I might be presenting, um, my, the executives might have a ton of uh, PowerPoints, but in this case, they're getting a really interesting brain with all the information they need that also functions as a presentation tool. And um, we actually, I actually have a version of this brain that I did um, that is a little bit more developed that I'll show you here. This one was done in auto, autumn. So you can see all the kinds of stuff that, how this one was created. It's a little bit more of a subdued background and here's all the stuff in product release strategy. Um, there's a section for future growth um, where everyone came in here and brainstormed and we added thought types and tags, for all ideas for market expanding, expansion. We also linked to a, another engineering brain um, what else? Customer service. There was all kinds of things about what had to be done, what we should do, and what needed to be covered. Um, so this this brain really became uh, quite a, a powerful segment for all of us. And of course, add um, more graphics here, which is really nice as well with these zoomable icons in our pathways to success. And in this case, I use the icons, but you can also use zoomable images for your thoughts. So just an example 
of the kind of brain that you can create. And then finally, if you're not using the brain for meeting management, I'm just going to go to my brain, um, or sorry, presentation, you can actually just have an area on meeting management. I'm just going to go to my meeting management thought here. And I actually have a, a section, yes. So go ahead and uh, create this thought, especially if you have a lot of meetings. A lot of client meetings, a lot of internal meetings under your business. You, have, you can have all your departments, but I love this thought on meeting management. And I actually have a thought type for meeting. And this looks pretty good because I can actually go ahead and I will actually have thoughts for, this is a, an old meeting on an old board meeting, but I have thoughts for everything we cover in the meeting. There's notes. You can do your meeting notes as well in the notes area. and. Um, the other thing that I have is thought types for if something is covered, let's say there's a new idea for a new product for 2018. I can go ahead and add this in my brain, but I can give this a thought type by right-clicking on it and selecting a thought type. And we've got all you can do all kinds of thought types, but one of the thought types I particularly like um, is whether something is a green-lighted idea or a hot topic. So I can come in here and give this a hot topic. Or the one that works well for me, let me go back to thought types here, is my action item. So now out of all these, these ideas that were discussed, the ones that are in purple, well, these are my action items. And that's what's most important to me. And of course, I can actually go into my thought type and go ahead and go to that my action item thought type, which I'm just going to go ahead and scroll to really quickly. Or I can use the search as well, my action item, which I'll do that. And it's going to have everything that was tagged as my action item in any meeting, in all my different meetings. So at the end of the day or on Friday or Monday, if I need to know what are the responsibilities that are falling in my lap, I've got a thought type. Same thing with tags. You'll notice tags uh, are additional categories that you can add to thoughts to further categorize ideas. You can have multiple tags per thought. And um, I take things based on time frame, budget. So for instance, if I've allocated things that we're doing within six months or two months, I've got tags for that. Um, all kinds of interesting tags. I've got tags for level of budget here. So if we get funding on certain things, here are all my high investment projects. So I can move very quickly. So um, even if you're not presenting with the brain, having that meeting management area and using the brain to either capture the ideas that are happening in meeting or prepare um, for your meetings, um, you know, is a really uh, nice, nice example. And I've definitely, um, you'll definitely save time and feel ready to go um, with that section. And then I think that covers everything uh, that I needed to cover, Matt, unless there were any questions. Great. I think I've answered uh, most of the questions that have come in so far. So today I'm really looking at side-by-side -side PowerPoint versus the brain and the advantage of using the brain in a presentation. Um, we're all familiar with PowerPoint. It needs no introduction. It is sort of the industry leader and has been for years for giving a presentation. The downfall of a PowerPoint presentation is number one is that it's linear. Um, it's very difficult to get from one slide to another slide. And so often I see a PowerPoint presentation and we're skipping over those, those bypass slides. Oh, sorry, this one doesn't pertain to your unique environment or your unique question, or, oh, you've got a question about a particular product. Yeah, I've got a slide on that somewhere. And so you're scan scanning through this long list of, of slides to get to where you're going. So let's go ahead and start with a PowerPoint presentation. I'll just start from the current slide, my welcoming slide to my furniture company. And this is the PowerPoint that I would give to uh, uh, new clients, even existing clients to talk about some of the different products we're working on in my organization. Everything's all laid out in a very nice PowerPoint here. Um, you can see as I click or go down with arrows, I can go through first off the history of the company, talk about how we got our start, the tools that we use, the materials, the people, et cetera. So I really want a few people to feel really comfortable with my company before we get into the products. 
the the uh, difficult point there is that some of these people may already be familiar with the company. They know about the history and the materials I use. They're a repeat customer. They're coming back to learn more. So, okay, I bypass a few slides and maybe they even ask a question. I've heard there's a spindle armchair. I really want to take a look at this spindle chair. Uh, it's going to go really well with this dining set that we're putting together. Let's take a look. All right, now I'm really <laughs> struggling to go past uh, quite a few slides to get to the right place. Here I'm into chair, so I'm getting close. There it is, the spindle armchair. Combining this with the table, now I'm suddenly bouncing around to try and find, I've got a picture in here somewhere. There's the table, but the picture of, there it is, the chair and the table. Great, let's talk about making a purchase. That looks fantastic. This is exactly what I'm looking for, says the customer. What is the part number? I'd like to go ahead and order a set of these or two or three sets or 10 cents sets. Once again, I'm scrolling back to the right uh, location. There it is. We've got our part number and we can go on from there. So there's not a whole lot of interactivity within a PowerPoint. It's a linear show and tell. Let's go ahead and escape out of PowerPoint and present in the brain. Now, Shelly showed us earlier that there's some great features within the brain for presentations, and let's really focus on some of those to give you the best possible presentation with the brain. Now, of course, I can go full screen with the application, but then, of course, I still have my uh, tool tabs up above of the dropdown, the windows and, and uh, options and viewing options, as well as my tools down below, my notes and thought attachments running reports, doing a search, et cetera. So for a presentation, we can also go into presentation mode that'll minimize a lot of this extra information or clutter on the screen. Um, so I'm just gonna jump into uh, up to window and go down to presentation mode. Suddenly it's much cleaner. We don't have all those extra tools at the top that we don't currently need. We can get back to them by pressing escape. And we can even minimize down below this presentation that I've put together. I'm really focusing on the feature of the brain, which is the, uh, the zoomable icons. So that's how I'm gonna look at all the images of, of my products, all my content. I'm just going to hover over a thought. And as you can see, it scrolls out to its largest size. So we can talk a little bit about the history of the company. They wanna know about a specific chair. I can get there very easily. I'll jump into the catalog. I've got a modern catalog, vintage mission catalog. I can also do a search, I'm searching through all the notes, all the content, anything that is text-based. So I can get right to my spindle armchair. There it is, Ellis armchair. That's what I was looking for. I can click to get right to that particular thought very, very quickly and easily. No time wasted. I get right to the thought and we take a look at the part number, et cetera. It can also be linked to other thoughts, other locations. Here's where a very similar armchair, actually the inspiration for armchair, our armchair was found in a, an historic museum. And I can mouse over and just display that. We can discuss a little bit about the history of this chair, the qualities, et cetera. So I can get right to where I want and the actual presentation becomes interactive. My guests, my audience can actually lead the presentation with their questions, their, their thoughts, their uh, feedback. I also have the option of minimizing the content down below. You can see in the upper right-hand corner, I have these little arrows. When you're in presentation mode or just running the brain in general, if you're focused on the Plex and you don't need so much to concentrate on the notes down below, I can simply click this button and that toggles those tool tabs down below on and off. Now I'm really focused just in the structure of the Plex. As Shelly showed us earlier, we can jump into different views. So if I wanna see the big picture of a presentation, I can go into my outline view or an expanded view. We've already reviewed those, but I can still get to those components here from presentation mode. I've also set up a couple of pins at the top that are particularly important to me. Let's say I'm sitting down with one of our longtime customers, Tom Turlington, and we're going through our parts one by one. So I've got a link, uh, a, uh, a um, pin, excuse me, at the top of my brain to get to Tom's spot. So when we're talking about our products, 
let's say Tom is particularly interested in the Ellis armchair. We spend a lot of time in our meeting today talking about the design of this chair, uh, sturdiness, how it looks with other uh, components or pieces of furniture that he's bought in the past. I'm really quickly during the meeting, just gonna link Ellis armchair up to Tom Turlington. Um, he also specifically mentioned that he liked the V-back armchair. Took some time there. I'm going to link those up. And jumping over into our modern furniture, we've got a lot of great uh, new things that we're working on here in the modern furniture. And once again, notice I'm just mousing over the thoughts uh, to talk about the different, uh, just to see a picture, to talk about that particular item. And when we find a particular chair we like, boy, he really likes the look of this chair. It looks like that uh, sort of 1970s armchair that his dad would sit in, felt very nostalgic about that. Once again, I'm gonna link that thought up to Tom Tarlington. Now, at the conclusion of our meeting, uh, we had a great discussion about a lot of new products that we're putting out there today. And I can say with Tom, you know, we really talked a lot about Big Ben, we talked about the Ellis armchair, and we talked about the VBAC uh, armchair. Time to make an order. So we can just review the chairs that he's interested in. Or the meeting got cut short, we're gonna return to this later. I'm gonna leave those thoughts linked to Tom so that when we have our follow-up meeting, I can get right to the components that Tom was interested in and not start the whole presentation in a slideshow from the beginning, I know where Tom's interests lie. And if Tom is ready to make an order, I'm just gonna hit escape really quickly to jump out of presentation mode. And so I'm back in my brain. I'm gonna bring my tool tabs down below back by clicking on the arrows. And I've got a link so I can open up an order form. I can see all of Tom's previous orders, or more importantly, I can just really quickly jump down here into the notes. Now you can see I've got down in the notes all of Tom's contact information. I've got some notes about a showroom he's opening in August. He's actually a distributor. When I mouse over Tom, he's a distributor and he's opening his own showroom uh, for handcrafted furniture. So I've got some notes on that. We can have that discussion. But most importantly, Tom is gonna be making a new order. I'm like to, I like to use this timestamp feature in the notes so here's the day that he requested the order. He said, send me an invoice, send invoice for three sets of Ellis armchairs. Oops, set of eight. And maybe he wants 10 Big Ben chairs, 10 Big Ben. So, just a quick note during our meeting, maybe I just take that as we're having a, a discussion at the conclusion of the meeting or throughout the meeting, I pop back into that thought, make a quick note. He did request the invoice, so that's fantastic. I've captured that information right here in my presentation tool. I didn't have to switch to another app uh, or another location. I've gathered that information and I can come back to that at a later date. And as Shelly showed us as well, we can set up thought types and tags. How am I gonna remember? Maybe I've got five or six meetings to go to today. Later today, I'm meeting with the Lodge at Torrey Pine. And our last discussion, we had a, a lot of different furniture options going. This is gonna be a huge order, but I don't wanna forget my customer with a smaller order, Tom Turlington. And so what I'm going to do is really quickly create a thought tag. I had this thought tag in previously, but I deleted it. So you can see how I create new thought tags on the fly. So you can see some of my thought tags, I'm just keeping track of inventory. So if a person knows, uh, wants to you know, talk about a particular uh, piece of furniture, I know whether it's out of inventory, retired, et cetera. Um, some, the sales, I'm also keeping track of, you know, the, the sales have hit zero. We've got no sales of a product. Might be time to revamp that product, put it on sale to get rid of our inventory, et cetera. So a lot of additional helpful information that I'll see Big Ben, this might be of information, to, uh, of value to Tom, this information, that our sales have gone over 100. It's selling, it's a real good seller. People really love the nostalgia, the big chunkiness of this chair. That might help him to make his decision. It's too popular, I want unique things, I don't want it. Or, wow, it sells, let's get 10 of those in my showroom. 
So again, just additional information right here in the presentation tool that can help my customer. And in this case, I'm gonna make a note for myself so I don't forget that Tom has requested this invoice. Um, uh, I believe Shelly had a sort of a hot topics or current focus. I like that terminology. I'm gonna say current focus. And as I create the, thought, the tag down below, it assigns this tag to Tom Turlington. So when I get back to the office after my road trip with meeting with all these clients, what are my current focus, focuses? I may have an order to take care of here with Tom. Logitory Pines went really well. Maybe I took a lot of notes there. I just right click and attach the current focus thought tag to this thought. Uh, director's table, sales have hit 50 but maybe we've got Bill that's ordering some, Logitory Pines that it's, are gonna ordering some. I really wanna make sure we have the inventory, whatever the wood or the components for this particular piece of furniture. Wanna make sure we've got everything in stock because we're going to be selling a lot of these this upcoming summer. I'm gonna right click on this and add the thought tag. Again, current focus. So you can see with the thought tags, you can actually add more than one. So I love those thought tags, assigning those to thoughts. It's like adding another criteria uh, uh, to your thoughts without actually visualizing and seeing all the extra connections within your brain. You can just see it right there below the thought. This is the current focus. Sales have hit 50 and they're going up from there. So I'm really, really enjoying the success of this particular product. And of course, like I said, when I'm back at the office, I can actually click on the thought tag. I could run a report uh, or I can click on the thought tag to find all thoughts that are my current focus. I had a lot of meetings. I don't wanna forget any of those invoices out there, even with the smaller customers. Now I just created this thought tag, so there's not gonna be many results, but once again, I can go in and say, all right, show me all of my thought tags that are current focused. There they are. And I can click through these one by one. Director's table, let's call down to the shop uh, floor, make sure they've got all the parts they need to crank out another 20 or 30 of this product. Uh, let's put together our invoices for our customers. So current focus doesn't necessarily have to be a person or a customer. It could be a product or a project that I'm working on or just an idea I have about upcoming pieces of, of furniture, brainstorming I had in the brain while I was traveling and out on the road. Speaking of brainstorming, let's go ahead and I really wanna show you in more detail how I created this brain. You can see that I'm mousing over all of these thoughts to get that nice zoomable icon. There's many different ways you can get content into the brain. Um, I can drag and drop to create a new thought. Um, I can take screenshots and I can even add information into the notes. So let's first talk about, once again, PowerPoint. How did I get all of these PowerPoint slides into my brain? Well, I, again, really enjoy using that feature in the brain for capturing an icon for a thought. So let's go down to a particular screenshot. Let's say I really like uh, this particular <clears throat> piece of furniture, sort of a, uh, an end table for a dining room or a buffet and I'm going into my brain, Logitory Pines, and let's actually go into our products area. So living room, here's dining room, and I'll just call this the new buffet. So if you're just learning about the brain and you've got all of these existing PowerPoint presentations, but PowerPoint, overused, used in every meeting so far. You really wanna wow your audience at your next meeting. Time to transfer your existing PowerPoint content into the brain. This is how I like to do it. So I created um, the PowerPoint first before I actually created the brain. Created the si slides, added image, added uh, text. What I like to do is simply get the PowerPoint slide open. And I can go through this one by one. It gets going really, really quickly. Uh, um, and you saw I created the thought. I right click on the thought with that PowerPoint slide open in the background. I right click on the thought and simply select to capture the thought icon. So when you select capture thought icon, the brain minimizes. If you want to take a brain screenshot, if that's what you're after, this is a nice little hidden tip 
just click the tab and the brain comes back. But I'll click tab again to minimize the brain. And here's what I'm after, just this nice little slide in PowerPoint. I don't need the Laura Bloom Furniture Company logo at the top, so I'll start here and click and drag. Very similar to Snagit. If you're familiar with Snagit, it's the same properties. Uh, whatever I click and drag, I draw out a frame on the screen and that becomes my zoomable icon. So back in the brain, I mouse over and there's that new buffet and details on pricing can be down below or maybe that's on another slide that I wanna add as another thought. But very, very quickly, you can build out a brain with an existing PowerPoint presentation and place all the individual thoughts exactly where you want them. And maybe a lot of people are buying not only the buffet, but because it matches so well, the Ellis armchair. So I'll make a link. And if a person is placing an order for a buffet, might as well upsell that customer. I might as well start talking a little bit about chairs that go very nicely with that layout. So I've got a nice little jump thought between the two. Again, very easy to create and very hard to replicate in PowerPoint, but can be done from the brain. Also, a lot of the times the images don't exist in PowerPoint yet. Um, I don't use PowerPoint, so when I have a new image that I want, uh, maybe I'm finding it on the web, again, in the same way, or I've got existing pieces of, uh, of data. I've got documents, etc. Once again, we can drag and drop all of those right into the brain. Here, we're more talking about a visual display, so I can open these in any application. This is a really, really cool chair that I really like called the Curl. So let's have that open in the background, and I'll Alt-Tab now over to the brain. There it is, so just using some keystrokes to get there, and I'll jump back into my modern furniture area. So under modern chairs, I've got a new chair called the curl. So I'll create the thought. Now, once again, let me just share with you, I could have very easily, let's actually minimize this or close it, uh, for curl. How can we get this content into the brain? There's many different options. I'll create a little side-by-side -side display here. So of course we can drag and drop if I want this to pop out in its native application. Now, the great thing about images in the brain, since it's just a JPEG, the brain will realize, oh, this is a JPEG image. It's all that's attached to this thought. He probably wants to see it really quickly when he hovers over that thought. So the brain created a zoomable icon for me. So by dragging and dropping, I created a link back to this JPEG image, and I still get the zoomable icon. So that's pretty nice. And you can look at the thought tool tab, and there's the actual file attachments uh, path. So that's out on my uh, desktop. I can also, let's open this up, or here, let's go this way. I'll close that once again. I can just right click on the thought, select copy. Maybe I want this image down in my notes because I've got more text about uh, price, measurements, or sizing for the chair, etc. And I just hit control V to paste right into my notes so we can have graphics in the notes as well. I like the zoomable icon, so typically what I would do is, again, open that up and make sure I've got it on the screen. Now I'm gonna go back and just delete that link. So I've got nothing attached. I do have the picture in the notes, but again, I right click and to capture thought icon, I'll just click and drag right over that image, getting just the parts that I want. Now I've got my nice zoomable icon. Where does this zoomable icon actually reside? In case you're wondering, uh, now when I sync this brain to the cloud, we're gonna be talking about that next, sharing this brain with my other colleagues, et cetera. Where does the actual file reside? It goes with the brain wherever the brain goes. So I can sync to the cloud, zoomable icon will be there. It'll be available from other machines that I'm syncing to as well. But on the Thought Tool tab, if I click on this button, little folder with a blue or a green arrow, that shows me the containing folder for this thought. So there you can see it's any content that is in my notes. I've got this image in my notes and it's the zoomable icon. So it attaches as a ping, a PNG file uh, called the brain icon for this particular thought. So all my zoomable icons are preserved in the database of the brain, just to give you some uh, background information. 
And then finally, let's take this brain and uh, make it available everywhere I go and to other members of my sales team that need to give presentations with this brain as well. So I'm gonna take this brain that I've modified today, added a lot of additional information. I'm gonna sync it up to the cloud. And this brain is also available for me at www.webbrain.com. So in a browser, uh, here I actually already have the brain open, but I'll start from scratch. I'll go to my account page. And you can log into the brain by going to our website, www.thebrain.com. You can log into WebBrain. Uh, there's a link in the upper right hand corner to log in and these are all the brains that i have available and i've got my own account i also have team brain so i can share my brains with other users and you can see here's my lower bloom furniture brain if i look at the settings for this particular brain i believe shelly demoed this really quickly earlier patrick is a reader for this brain shelly has editor access so she can make modifications as well on this brain and I can add new users as my sales team continues to grow but let's go ahead and go back to this brain and just simply view this brain online so maybe I'm at an, uh, uh, an event I don't have my laptop with me but a person is asking about products we can log in on their machine and I can simply get online and once again navigate to my brain and find all of my available information. Maybe I run into uh, Tom at an event and we just wanna talk about his progress. Here I can go to the Tom Turlington thought. I've got all his notes below. I've got links to all the different products that he's interested in and all of his order forms down below in my brain that I have uh, available to me at webbrain.com. And finally, I'll close with this not only do i have my brain available from the web i have my phone available for viewing all of my brains online as well so i'm going to log in to my brain account and let me bring my camera back so i can see uh, that i'm holding it up the right way there's me and so here are all of my brains and right there is my lore bloom furniture brain so you can see i've got access to all my thoughts down below are all of the buttons to create new thoughts, or if I want to get to a particular note, I can click the notes. There's no notes on this thought, so I'll click, bring up the keyboard, and leave some more notes on that particular thought. And when I'm back at my desktop, sync the brain. So all those changes that I did on the live server on webbrain.com, that's where I'm making those changes when I'm logging in from my iPhone, will be synced and uh, synchronized here with my desktop version. So Shelly, I think with that, that's everything that I wanted to cover. Hopefully I planted the seed to go into your next presentation, not with PowerPoint, but with the brain. Uh, but yes. with that, do we have any additional questions in the, in the GoToMeeting panel? Everyone wants to know where to get the chair. <laughs> So it is a fictitious company. I am a woodworker by hobby, as, a, as a hobby, but it is a fictitious company. So uh, Lower Bloom Furniture does not make the real chair. <laughs> All right. Very good. Um, lovely brain. And um, we're going to get into Q&A. Um, real quick, a lot of people are asking um, about uh, recording for this event. Some of you came late. Some of you have to leave early. Um, everyone who signs up for the webinars, even if they can't attend, gets a, a recording automatically emailed the next day and we always publish recordings on our homepage and tweet them out so you can follow us on Twitter and we also have a section on our site for recordings. So we did cover a lot of questions. We're going to go for a couple minutes into overtime for those of you that can stay just to answer a few more questions. And one of them came in a little bit earlier from Steve and we did you did cover it with syncing, uh, but I want to specifically address synchronization of the cloud in terms of document backup. And Steve's question was for document backup. When you just moved documents, um, would the brain document backup be accomplished by the cloud? Yes. So all of the internal attachments, notice I'm clicking on a couple of thoughts that have, here's an Excel spreadsheet, uh, a Word document. And notice those files are there. I can open them or download them uh, to whatever other machine that I'm on. If I say I want to get to this large order form, I can actually click and download. You can see it just downloaded down below. I'll give this a little more real estate. So I downloaded 
ah, my Excel spreadsheet. There it is. I can launch that in, um, in Excel. All those internal attachments that you move into your brain or copy into your brain, uh, go with the brain wherever the brain goes. It's just the shortcuts. If you're creating just a link back to the original Word document or Excel spreadsheet, when you sync that to the cloud, all you've preserved is the path to that file. The file itself does not sync up to webbrain.com. So internal attachments are syncing. And I should point this out. Um, if you want to review your brain, you're about ready to sync your brain and take it with you to a sales meeting, what have you. Will those files be with the brain when you sync online? I'm going to open the brain, go down to reports. And I will run a report for all attachments with external attachments. There's one, this cabinet 01 thought. I go to the thought tool tab. There it is. It's pointing to a JPEG on my desktop. So when I sync this brain to the cloud, notice I only have one thought in that report. That's because I move all of my content into the brain. But I did this at one point for a demo back in 2014. That shortcut is no longer there. It's certainly not going to be there from the cloud or from another machine that I log in from. So internal attachments uh, will, will sync to uh, webbrain.com. And again, that's also if you have the Brain Pro Combo. So the Brain Pro Combo allows you to, number one, add those file attachments, but also to sync them to the cloud. If you don't have the Pro Combo, don't have a services account, you can only sync brains with web links and web content, not internal file attachments. Yes, and you know, it's just great for backup. Um, you know, we're talking mm -hmm. a lot about presence. And actually, in two weeks, we're doing a webinar on the brain for file management. And yes, the, the ability to synchronize data across different machines and as that backup on the cloud is, is so relevant, especially now if you're doing a lot of traveling. I, I have a client who does a lot of work in Dubai where they're now doing the laptop check-in. So he's got all his data synchronized to our cloud. Um, so that, you know, it, with travel, um, that's really important for those of you that can take laptops on the flights and international our, um, the, the client version of the brain functions in disconnection mode, um, which is also nice for field service. So let's say Matt is going out to um, some field in Mil Milwaukee to present his chairs. He doesn't need that internet connection because we have the desktop client, which is what makes us somewhat unique from just these clouding, mind mapping applications. So we kind of get the best of both worlds. So let's say he adds a, ch a new chart thought of chair, whatever, he can then, when he gets back into an area with wireless, it will automatically sync to the cloud. So it actually works both ways. Or if I'm on a flight and I am plugging away on a new sales strategy, um, no internet on that flight, all that information is on my client. And then the minute um, you know I get back online, my changes will automatically be synchronized with my other machine at home, with my other machine at work, and online. So the cool thing about data synchronization is um, you've got your client software that can be used um, without a wireless connection, but we also take advantage of clouding and the data synchronization is great. Gone are the days. I remember like 10 years ago, I had a US <laughs> that I travel with. I'm such a geek with like all my data because I don't want to lose it. Like obviously we, no one does that anymore, but. Um, and you'll uh, notice when you, right. when you install the brain, yeah, I can click on file, select open brain. Uh, to Shelly's point, I've got a local copy of some of these brains and an online version. If I, I've got quite a few different brain databases here. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom. But you can see some of these I only have online. I don't need the desktop version or I simply don't have it on this machine. But if I do need it, there it is online. We're stepping into a meeting. We want to talk with someone about my projects. I've got my online brain so I can visit it on the cloud or hear from the desktop application. I can download this really quickly, open this brain up, and continue on using it in the desktop. So the online version and the desktop versions both available to me anywhere I go. And that's great because, like with field service technicians, um, going back to some some of our clients uh, with airlines, they actually the field field service agents can take the brain out on the field and troubleshoot do whatever it is they need to do without worrying about, wow, I can't connect to the server or my internet connection is slow. Um, so that's um, a really nice feature as well, the online and offline use of the brain and how they work together in, in tandem for whatever situation you might have. Uh, another question came in earlier 
from Bruce, and I just want to clarify, because I actually was in presentation mode, and then I started changing the brain, not in presentation mode, but yes, his question was, can you make changes to a brain in presentation mode, or do you have to move out of that mode? You can. You absolutely, you, you still get, the menus are hidden just to give you a nice slick look in presentation mode, but all the functionality of the software is still there. Um, I just elected to kind of move out of it to, to show people another view, but that is absolutely all your, you can create thoughts, do links, you can see math in presentation right now and mode right now and doing all that, that wonderful stuff. And then a question from Dennis on pins. Can pins be reordered, which I could see could be important if you're presenting, you might want to have your pins in a certain order. Absolutely. So let's even staying here in presentation mode. Uh, let's say I want this Ellis armchair just to be sort of out here on the far right end of my pin list. I'm just going to click and drag over to the right. And when I release Ellis armchair is on the right. So you can reorganize your pins. If you've got a high res machine and you've got a long stream of pins and you want people pins over on the left, product pins over on the right, no problem, let's just click and move Tom over to the right. This is the customer over to the right, and here's Lower Room Furniture, Ellis Armchair, or those over to the left and the others over to the right, what have you. You can just click and move around. One thing to be aware of, let me go back into regular uh, mode, make my thoughts a little smaller. So I'm in normal mode. If I click Ellis Armchair and uh, you can see if I drag it a little too far away from the pins, it thinks that I'm going to rearrange it and reconnect it to a thought down here in the plaque. So if you're just organizing your pins, stay on that plane left and right to reorganize. Otherwise the thought actually thinks that you're trying to, you can see it'll draw a little link eventually. And uh, oops, get off there. It'll think that you're trying to connect it to one of the thoughts down below. So it won't actually reorganize itself unless it stays on that pin. So you'll get the hang of it really, really quickly. Right. Then the thing with pins is I sometimes think, well, I mean, on my own personal brand, I have a lot because I like to use that as my digital dashboard. But for presentation, maybe less is more when you when you are presenting, do look at your pins and, you know, maybe four to five of them, I think, is is, is more than adequate. But I also think the pins are important when you're publishing a brain online because a lot of people, they might, they go a little bit deeper than a standard web nav site because we've done some testing on that. That being said though, they may not go to that area that's, you know, seven levels down on your products or whatever. So if you, uh, when you publish the brain, don't forget your pins, put, put at least three or four pins up there and try and, and if it's for navigational purposes or just online sharing, Try and pick some pins that maybe there's it's an area in your brain that people don't regularly go to so that they can kind of have a, an access. And Jerry publishes his brain. I have some brains where you can go and change your pins regularly, too, to kind of feature new areas uh, in a brain that has been published. So lots of lots of different uses for pins. And then another also, question. Yeah. Uh, and since you're uh, mentioning sharing the brain and, and the usage of pins. I've also seen other, and Jerry did this as well, just created a simple thought called good starting points. Pin that one thought, and that thought is connected to that disparate group of random thoughts throughout your brain that you want to direct people to, new products, uh, innovative ideas, et cetera. So a lot of different ways you can play around with those pin features. And by the way, I just realized we're just mentioning Jerry, like everyone knows Jerry. Oh, yeah. I should, I, I should, <laughs> I should, for those of you who are unfamiliar, Jerry Mikulski is a technology analyst who's been using the brain for over a decade, and he's on record as having the largest brain with over 360,000 thoughts, at least half a million links. He has it free for everyone to look at online. It's got everything from a tech taxonomy to all kinds of social and uh, scientific uh, topics, so really cool stuff. And he also sells his brain online for 99 cents in the app store as an app. So he's, he's kind of gone full gamut. We have links to this on our site. Um, we can tweet or share that. Um, and Matt's got his brain open and it's got, it's just got all kinds of stuff in there. So that yeah. is. And the easy link to remember is www.jerrysbrain.com. Okay. And then um, the Dennis had a question about custom reports. Can a yes. custom report be saved into a brain so that it can be reused 
the same if published online or the same if it's in a presentation demo. Right. So as your brain continues to grow and evolve, uh, from time to time, you'll notice you're running a report to find all thoughts of a particular type or all thoughts with a particular tag or all recently modified thoughts. There's a lot that you can do with those reports. Let me go back to all thoughts. So this uh, is a fairly small brain, but once again, as your brain gets over 1,000, 5,000, 10,000 thoughts, it's nice to be able to go down to the reports and say, all right, show me all thoughts that have been modified since April, 20, uh, or April 18th, 2017. So 69 thoughts have been modified uh, in that time frame. I actually touched up and did a lot of uh, changes here today in this particular brain. But I can go down and create my own custom report using all these different filtering categories in combination so saying okay show me all thought types uh, that are in production and have an inventory of over 50 are not retired so i'll click on retired twice so you can see there's a lot of modifications you can do here i can go on and say ignore uh attachments of a particular file type etc but i'll just say okay and i actually have one product that matches that but if you think about this, as this brain evolves 10 years from now, 20 years from now, when my company is huge and located in, in Europe and around the world, and, and we've got thousands of different products, that same report might produce more results or different results. So I'm going to go back into my custom reports. I really like this report. I'm going to save this. So and I'll just call this good sales. So now in the future, I can, let's go back to all thoughts. I can sit down and rather than going through and tweaking all those little steps that I really like, I can say, all right, show me all of my products that are qualify as a good sale. So load my good sales report. So again, as my brain evolves, I'll have more thoughts that meet that criteria. So you can save those custom reports to run again and again in the future. I believe the last part of that question was, having access to that report online reports are not available from the web interface that is a feature that's only available right here in the uh, desktop application so no when i'm viewing that uh, this brain through the web interface the cloud interface or through my iphone or android device reports are not even an option to to run in those environments so just from the desktop uh, machine can you get back to that saved report all right, great. And uh, we are in overtime. So we'll uh, have one final question from Kristen that I want to cover. Uh, can audio be attached to a thought? And I actually know a couple composers who use the brain to organize their music. Really, uh, any file, whether it's an image, um, some weird file type, two audio files can be attached. Then what will happen is when you launch that audio file, you have to have that program registered so then it then plays in whatever um, you know piece of software you're using. I don't know if you have anything like that to cover, but uh, Kristen, we're happy to explore that with you, you know, with, through our free technical support and web meetings that we offer all users. And if Matt, if you have something you can show, but I did want to address it. Really any file, any file from audio to an image to most of the time it is a document or a web link can the thought can have any type of digital content attached to it. And yes, that would include audio. So I don't know if you have anything and to add to that, Matt. Sure. Here I've got an MP4 file. First thing I thought of when I thought of audio, it's not audio on its own, but a WAV file, uh, MP3 or, or whatever the case may be. I'm just going to click and drag. Now the default in the brain is to create a shortcut. Uh, but you can also right click on those files and move or copy the file internally into the brain. So when this syncs, again, it goes uh, up to the cloud. I right clicked, I moved a copy of that file internally into the brain. And yes, I can click to launch. And anytime you launch a file attachment, it's going to open in the native application for that file type. So this is an MP4. I've got a little Windows media player. That's how it launched that file. Uh, with audio, people have many different unique audio applications out there. So whatever your .wav uh, or .mp3 files open in from, as if you're clicking them from your desktop, that's how the brain is gonna open them too. The brain doesn't decide how to launch that file. But yes, those audio files can come into your brain 
and clicking on them will launch in your default audio playing application. Yeah, and it's actually great. I do a lot of music licensing for another a video game company that I work with. So a lot of these sites you go online, I love it for in licensing because I will drag and drop just links to the, the choices that I, I choose. And then rather than spending the money to license that piece of music or that image, I will then have that available with the link in the brain, discuss it with the team, and then go ahead and make that decision. So there's an example of kind of linking to audio within the meeting uh, management context as well. Lots of, lots of possibilities. But I think with that, we are well into overtime. So we're gonna close today's session. Thanks to everyone for who stayed till the final end. And hopefully um, everyone will, um, you know, be able to use the brain very effectively for presentation. Before I close the session, I do want to let you know that we have on Matt, if you want to show on the brain app, and we're going to update this, uh, this with this recording, there is the brain that I presented for presentations is available for download. And you can look at that one online. And if you go um, online to uh, thebrain.com, go to the app section and click brain for presentation and meeting management, there's a link to a blog entry, there's a link to an online brain a previous recording which will now be updated with this recording so there is some additional resources for you and we will include that in our thank you note and uh with that matt i don't know if you have anything more to add i guess you're you're having your 101 class on friday where that's that's, that's always right fun. yeah i just wanted to extend an invitation to anyone that is just seeing the brain for the first time you're new to the application or you're new to the idea of mind mapping or or visual information management please join me for the brain 101 we hold the classes every friday you can sign up from our homepage at the brain there's a link at the very bottom for free online live training so every friday the brain 101 join me tomorrow and i'm really talking about just the basics creating new thoughts adding links and attachments interconnecting them to other thoughts and a little bit of syncing to the cloud so we're gonna start from scratch with the Brain 101 tomorrow. Feel free to join me then. And thanks for joining us today. All right, and with that, we're gonna close our session today. And we look forward to seeing you on future uh, Brain Technologies events. Thanks everyone, have a great day. Have a great day, bye.